This is Seasons of Discontent with your hosts, Rick Snyder and Matt Cones on the Hogstein Network. Welcome to Seasons of Discontent, Season 6, Episode 11, brought to you by Rick Snyder's Washington across social media. And I'm Rick Snyder. And I'm tired. And we're back discussing all things Washington life and sports as part of the Mighty Hawks Time Network and on YouTube on the video part. And I guess it's Matt. I don't know. I, once yeah, I say that, it's Matt. <laughs> I can't stop. But I usually screw it up anyway. I, just right, try so, to, I try to say things to make you, you break, but I've only done it once. There you go. All right. So we're talking commander's draft uh, a little late than ever, but everybody still wants to talk about it. So why not? And commanders, I, I got to tell you, Matt, first two picks, I was like, what are they punking people here? They spent a year for this. What are you doing? And then the rest of the draft was okay. But man, the first two picks, everybody was ready to just burn their tickets and say, screw this. It was amazing. Yeah, you did a live show that night. And I'm glad I didn't join because uh, you may be banned on YouTube. Um, I, I, I don't know, Rick. Look, I understand there's needs on this team. And, and you know, you had three studs sitting at 11. And I know Rivera and Marty talked about, oh, well, this is a, a middle draft. There's a lot of great players in the middle rounds. So they right there, they, they played their hand. You knew they wanted to trade back. Um, but when they picked at 11 before they traded Alave, Jameson, and everybody's consensus pick for the commanders, Kyle Hamilton was sitting there. Um, I just don't understand it. Well, not Jameson, Jameson Williams. I'm sorry. Yeah. <clears throat> I always have problems with his first name. Um, Troy today, huh? James. He was sitting there posing with his Lions jersey. He looked like he was <laughs> one of the prison pictures. Oh, yeah, it is. <laughs> you got shunned to Detroit for at least four years. I mean, come on now. Yeah, it looked like a lineup shot. <laughs> you know, it, it was pretty funny. But anyway. And, and you know, yeah, look, is Dotson going to be good? I don't know. I can't tell you. I mean, he torched Maryland. I saw him do that. <laughs> um, you know, the first two picks were just very meh. You know, the second round pick from uh, the DT from Alabama, that's a, that's a, a need that you created. You created that need when you didn't re-sign Tim Settle for $7 million when you cut Matt Ioannidis, and you've already pretty much told Deron Payne, hey, we ain't bringing you back. So, uh, you know, maybe maybe that gets Deron Payne motivated so that he can go out and get a big contract next year with another team. But, you know, I, I just – I don't understand. Like you said, you you waste, you waited a year for, for those two picks. I mean, Dotson might end up being a good player. I know he's fast, but, Rick, we don't have a wide receiver over six feet tall. You know, unless you want to count Logan, but Logan's Logan's technically a tight end. Uh, you know, I've always been told you need a tall guy in the in 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 the red zone, and I guess they have Cam Sims. He's six four, but I'm sorry, Cam Sims has never proven anything to me. Um, but you know, like I said, Alave was sitting there, Williams was sitting there, and and of course Kyle Hamilton was sitting there, which you still need a safety. The kid that they got in the fourth all the reports coming in on him is he's a special teamer. He's going to be a special teams ace. Well, that doesn't say anything for your starting state safety position. Uh, you know, I, I read a report today that uh, the giants are, are poised to release James Bradbury. And of course we heard reports that there's thoughts on, there's mutual thoughts that Landon might end up back at the commanders just with a smaller salary. Um, I, I don't know, man. <laughs> I don't know. This draft just kind of left me scratching my head after the first two days. Well, so Dodson, people were going, oh, he could be a 70 catch guy. Here's why I won't. I'm not going to throw 70 balls to him unless injuries take away things and they have no choice. But he's going to get, I think, in the 40 some range. And it's a little underwhelming when you could have had Olave or, or Jameson Williams. Uh, well, and, uh, you know, so I, there's where your impact is lost a little bit. And then your DT, well, you could have gone a couple other ways. And I, I will say everybody was wondering what about quarterback in the second round. And, man, we saw what happened there. I mean, Carson, uh, Carson uh, Strong went did not get drafted. I thought he was going to be a second rounder, you know, uh, 
Washington managed to get Sam Howell, who I think is a nice player in the fifth round. That was real value too, I thought, aside all the nonsense drama. Um, so quarterbacks turned up not being anything. I mean, they're talking about Malik Willis going sixth overall pick, and he went, what, the third or the fourth? Yeah. I mean, wow, what a quarterback. Weird draft. Instead, receivers were the hot thing that everybody wanted. Washington could have gotten themselves another ace, and suppose Terry doesn't resign because, well, they could franchise him, I guess. But, you know, you don't see Terry rushing to sign a deal either. And I, everybody's talking about Terry's got to get paid. Well, maybe Terry's and his agent think, you know what? Might want to wait till next year. Worst thing happens to get franchised. Yeah. You know, Washington offer him a better number than the franchise tag, right. which is hard. So, you know, that's an interesting thing to do why they took Dotson. Uh, on there although Dotson will never be I think as good as Terry uh, but those first two picks were really weird and then then they got back in rhythm I mean Brian Robinson out of Alabama um, really only had one big year he was a reserve but at Alabama it's hard to play but I like him a lot between the tackles you know I wrote he's kind of a rigo drill kind of guy you can feed inside doesn't drop the ball you can give Antonio Gibson some other latitude of what he's doing you know, and then they took a tight end in the uh, fifth, Cole Turner, who's like six six, I think, and has decent hands. That's about it. But they, you know, you don't know what Logan Thomas. I don't know if he's ready opening day. Right. And so you target and let's not forget Wentz threw more to tight ends than any other quarterback the last five years. So you had to go there. Right. And they and lost Ricky Seals Jones. They needed a third tight end. Um, you know, obviously they got Bates. They got Logan. Um. Yeah, I really like the the tight end pickup, the kid from Nevada. I think he was a wide receiver that converted to tight end, so he's got good hands. He's still working on his blocking, but that's what John Bates' role is. John Bates is your blocking tight end that can catch a ball or two. But this kid, this kid, I, I think the running back and the tight end are going to see the field this year multiple times. Um, Dotson, I'm not sure how much he'll be mixed into the packages. I think it all kind of stems on Curtis Samuel's injury. Um, you know, and then they still have Dax Milne. They still have guys from last year. They brought back Cam Sims. They just signed a wide receiver today from Carolina. So there's some familiarity there. Um, you know, I, I, everybody's just slotting him in at the third spot and he's going to be a slot, a slot wide receiver. I'm not so sure, you know, we got to see if he can make the jump. I mean, look, the kid's saying all the right things. I'm not going to dog the kid. He, he, he got out of the limo or the escalator or whatever with a football in his hand. I mean, he's got great hands. We've seen it. Uh, he can he can get separation. He's fast. Uh, and I understand that's what they're going for. They're going for speed at the wide receiver position. Basically, so when Cor Carson Wentz is running for his life, he can chuck it up and say, well, there's somebody there that's going to catch it. Um, but, you know, Rick, I'm really surprised. Like I said, I think the – and I'm sorry, I don't know his name and I don't know how to pronounce it. The DT from, from Alabama. I'm really surprised that they went that way with, you know, a guy like uh, Nicobe Dean was sitting out there. I know the injury concerns, but Philly didn't care about the injury concerns. The Ravens didn't care about the injury concerns with, with uh, Kyle Hamilton. You know, that's a, that's a stud that was projected to go in the first round that slipped. You know, I would have loved to have him as much as we needed a linebacker on this team. Um I, I, I don't know. I, I, I'm very iffy on this draft, and I, I feel like this was the year that Ron and company needed to prove it. And to me, I mean, obviously, it's going to play out on the field. But to me, right now on the surface, I, it doesn't really, doesn't really impress me very much. Uh, when we look back five years from now, we're going to look at this draft and go, nothing there. They're really in just some guys. Mm. It, might be, it might be okay, but there's no impact. There's no guy who's going to the Hall of Fame. There's none of that stuff, Pro Bowl. I don't see much at all. You know, the interesting part, though, about taking Cole Turner, is what's this do to Samus Rays? Does this mean that the gear experience, experiment is – and they might put him on practice squad, mm -hmm. but this is telling me that you don't think he's ready for even a part-time role no. doing – and I agree with that because he didn't do anything last year. Right. You know, the grand experiment. He got out on the field a couple of times. He got hurt because he didn't know how to protect himself on the field. And I, I thought it was it was a fun thing to try, but that was all it was. I, I think he probably goes to practice fine. And the way it's too big, he has a big following because he's an international player. It's amazing how many people ask about him. But to me, that was a clear signal of I don't see anything happening there. Look, we can't talk to draft without talking to the elephant in the room. Let's talk Sam Howell. I mean, 
for one, were you surprised he was there in the fifth? I mean, this is a guy that last year people people projected to be the best quarterback in the league. Yeah. Or, or in college and, football, I should say. I mean, I'm a little I'm, – I'm surprised all the quarterbacks fell like that because teams always talk themselves into it. And there's still several teams that could use a quarterback. I mean, somebody wrote this nonsense today about would Washington trade Taylor Heineke to one of those teams who really need a quarterback? And I thought, well, you know, tell me what you – I mean, what you're offering, but I know, you know, it's, that's how crazy it is that they're talking about, can they trade for Taylor Heineke? Um, so I'm surprised everybody fell that far. So how going to fifth, I thought, Oh, Max, I thought he's a second rounder, maybe a third. So I, I would take him too. And they go, well, they had to talk to Carson Wentz first. Shut up. You're playing yeah. ball and money. Don't worry about the, the rookie yeah that, bo- that bothered me if you had to talk to Wentz it's like how fragile is he and look I understand you know he he didn't get to win the Super Bowl because of folds and and he got replaced and you know every with uh um I guess he didn't really get replaced sure. in Indy but uh Jalen Hurts replaced him in Philly too so you know I understand but um you know look I, hey if the Wentz experiment goes wrong you know you don't have to keep him next year and maybe you give Sam Howell a shot. I mean, like I said, the kid was projected before this last college football season. Everybody had projected him to be in the top 10 of the draft. One of the best quarterbacks available. The kid lost both of his wide receivers, both of his running backs and half of his offensive line. And his numbers really didn't drop that much this season. Um, I, I'm interested to see, I, you know, a, if he even gets a chance, look, he should have uh, some good uh, rapport with Deami Brown. I mean, that was his wide receiver in college. That was one of the guys he lost. Uh, so I'm sure he's going to look good in the preseason. Um, but, you know, I, I want to know how much of a chance they actually give this kid. And does he grab the reins? Well, you know, last few years, what if they played three, four quarterbacks each year? Mm-hmm. I mean, why wouldn't he be there? If they really stink this year, which I'm not thinking they will, but if they did, I could see him maybe playing in December. But that's a long ways from now. You know, I the plan if he's playing, something bad happened. Uh, yeah, and I, I don't see them. I don't think the schedule is going to allow them to really stink that bad. Yeah. yeah, I don't see it. All right, before we go, we could talk some NHL. The Caps came up with a big first game win. When no, what they, the AC, nobody said they could do anything. They get swept. And uh, no, they, they turned it on the third period. So maybe the Caps are going to the Cup. Grab that Stanley. <laughs> yeah, they'll probably get blitzed now, but they won you know. one game, Rick. Calm down. <laughs> uh, woo! And uh and then your pens had to go to triple overtime. Yeah. Woo! Man, that's 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 a lot, man. It's hard to stay awake. And we lost uh, uh, and we lost another goaltender. So there's that. <laughs> so you you've got some I guess you have to jump on the caps bandwagon. We welcome everyone, oh. you know, to, to the game. No. Oh, well. All right. So we're going to be back again Friday. No, no Saturday morning. Saturday morning is the next one this week. We changed schedule because uh, we're busy. Mm-hmm. Uh, on, we will have a second show this week and try to do a few between now and then. I don't have anything for training camp, by the way, but uh, we'll talk about that next show. So I'm Rick Snyder. I'm Matt. We'll see you soon. Bye. Thanks for listening to Seasons of Discontent on the Hogstye Network.